Okay, thanks everyone for coming along tonight, especially those of you who don't know me. I think you're in a small minority. Uh, hopefully this isn't going to be too self-indulgent, as Oliver Braid advertised it, an evening of self-indulgence. Um, but I guess most artist talks are slightly on the self-indulgent side, so bear with me. Um, I think it's going to probably last just under an hour. Um, I went through it today and came in around 50 minutes. So um, if you've got any questions at the end, I'll be happy to take them. Or if you fancy challenging me on anything that I say, um, feel free to do that as well. Um, so for those of you, the minority who don't know me, my name's Ellie Harrison and I'm a Master of Fine Arts student at Glasgow School of Art. I'm in the second year and fingers crossed going to be graduating this summer. What I'm hoping to do tonight with this talk, Control Freak's Guide to the MFA, is to take you on a bit of a um, journey through my subjective experience of the MFA course at, at the School of Art. And to talk in practical terms about my approaches to two things in particular, one being time management and the other being self-motivation. And as I'm sure most of you are aware, both these things are kind of important skills for art students to have, and indeed um, for artists in general. And then what I want to do is to kind of explore how these two things, time management and self-motivation, uh, have come, become central to my research methodology over the course of the MFA and have gone on to sort of drive my practice forward. So the idea of self-motivation is an important concept um, in the field of meta-ethics, which I'm going to be discussing later, because it's motivation which is the point in which we transform our thoughts, desires and beliefs into action. It's motivation that's the tipping point between thinking about doing something and actually doing it. So what I've become interested in over the course of the MFA is where these motivations come from and how they materialise. And I'm interested in the rules, systems and structures that we impose on our lives in order to cause us to be motivated to do productive things. But I'm also fascinated by the counterproductive tendency, which I see inside myself, um, the opposite side of my personality, which motivates me to act in more destructive ways. Um, so to go back right to the beginning, before I began on the MFA, I had a small suspicion that the drinking of alcohol might feature fairly heavily in my postgraduate experience if I decided to come to Glasgow Art School of Art to do, to do the course. Um, and before I arrived, this was something that both equally um, thrilled and concerned me. Um, I first visited Glasgow in January 2008 for a tour of the School of Art and to get a feel for what the MFA course might be like. And I was shown around by two young and friendly master's students. One was called Connor Kelly and one was called Emmett Walsh, who both graduated in 2008. And after a short tour of the different buildings around the art school campus, um, we, were we were quickly dispatched to the state bar where we sat down and had our post-tour debrief. Um, and it was in the state bar and this cold um, January evening where I met other MFA students, a graduate of 2008, um, Neil MacDonald, and ex-graduates like Ruth Barker. And in fact, by the end of this one evening, I'd been introduced to all of, or, or I'd been pointed out rather, nearly all of the teaching staff on the Masters of Fine Art course who were sitting at an adjacent table. And the pints continued to flow and 
Before I knew it, I'd walked around the corner to the Blue Lagoon and indulged in my first, and I might say only pack, of beef fat saturated chips and then walked up the hill to the Vic where I'd proceeded to dance the night away. Um, so this was all, of course, before I even arrived to do the MFA. So I weighed up the options and I just thought to myself, did I come to Glasgow and embrace this drinking as part of the experience? And I decided that I definitely should. So this photo, um, which somebody has kindly tagged me in on Facebook, was taken on the 31st of October 2008, which was our first Halloween party on the MFA. Um, and actually, I'm dressed as Zhu Yu, I don't know exactly how you pronounce that, it's a Chinese name, who is the artist who um, became renowned, or, or, or rather was infamous for eating a um, human baby's corpse. But I thought that this might be an apt um, costume for a Halloween night. So that's me lying um, in a bathtub um, in the McClellan Galleries uh, later on in that evening. And um, yeah, you're probably not surprised to hear that I don't have much recollection of this photo being taken. Um, so amongst the kind of excitement of the first few months in Glasgow, of which this photograph is definitely evidence, concerns began to emerge about how this potential for hedonism may square with the other ambitions and desires and motivations that I had for doing the MFA course. Um, as it says in the copy that I wrote to advertise this talk, I arrived in Glasgow on the 15th of September 2008, having been starved of critical input for the five years that I spent in the real world, I came equipped with a manic desire to radically change my practice, to absorb as much knowledge as possible and to maximise every aspect of my daily routine. I was here to learn and grow and develop as an artist as much as I was here to party, to make new friends and to make the most of my youth. So I saw the MFA when I arrived here as an integral part of my formal and informal artist training program, which I embarked on in 2006. Because it was in 2006 that I first became aware of the fact that my work and also potentially the rest of my life was falling into a particular and repetitive pattern which I felt compelled to break out of. Um, so I also felt at this time that I was kind of lacking any real knowledge about how my practice connected with wider social or political um, structures or how it fitted into contemporary um, philosophical or critical discourses. So I manifested this desire that I had to change my practice in two ways. Firstly, by making this um, faux artist training programme, which has a rigid, it's a website which kind of is a, uh, operates as a self-help um, thing, which anyone can join in, can go on the website and can take part in it. It has a rigid, jam-packed schedule um, to help you develop as an artist. I also set myself the task of researching and creating for myself a wall chart which would attempt to document um, the entire history um, or the entire chronology of Western philosophy and critical theory from the ancient Greeks to the present as an, att as an attempt to learn it all off by heart.